Hi, welcome to the show. My name is Jesse Goldberg, and my guest today is Bill Myers, mm -hmm. and my co-host today is Brian Cumming. A few, remember, you used to be on the show a lot. I know. What happened? I don't know. I guess, you know, I'm, the ratings were down, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm bringing him back up with Bill today. Okay, I'm well, who excited. is this guy? What he is, is an illustrator that has probably done more with or for Nashville than anybody else because his work goes back to the movie Nashville, 1976, all the way up to the TV show Nashville. I'm really? You go to Nashville to Nashville? That's right. Really? Did, that's, that's interesting. Let's let him tell the story. Well, right, you can see it. the poster right there behind him. Well, he's he got, I can't just tell the story. i ask him questions. Okay. Where are you from? Nashville. <laughs> really? Is that true? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So wh wh how would you get started in this illustrating thing? Well, first, first I went, what is an illustrator? An illustrator is an artist who does um, drawings and paintings for books and magazines. So often you're illustrating t from a text. So um, you're conveying what an author wants to communicate uh, as a book cover and so forth. Well, so I call cover. myself a, a book, uh, I, I'm an illustrator and an artist. So the artist part, I do things like paintings and portraits and things uh, that I want to do myself. But the illustrator part, I'm usually uh, commissioned to do something. So the difference is the illustrator knows he's going to be paid before he does the work and the artist doesn't know if he's going to be did, paid at all. Did you ever, you ever do advertising? <laughs> of course, of? yes. So you work for advertising agencies? Yes. In that oh. film? Yes, all yeah. over. Oh, okay. Like I'm, Mad Men? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And you've seen the crazy guys on Mad Men in the, in the agency, uh, and it's very much like that. Right, well, it's in the 1960s. The illustrators. Yeah. Well, he started in the 60s. Yeah. Really? And I started in the You didn't 60s. jump out the building like they did. My very, my very first commission was a, a mural for Ireland's restaurant. It was a painting of the Scopes trial. And uh, Clarence Darrell, whom you well know. Spencer Tracy. Was uh, the protagonist in both murals because I also did the Leopold Loeb trial. And they were to hang at the uh, law room in uh, Ireland's restaurant. And they hung there for years and survived 20 years of beer drinking and two fires, I believe. Where are they now? Now they're hanging in the lobby of the law school at Vanderbilt. Oh, really? Yes. So, so they wound up, uh, it wound up when Mr. Bush died, his family donated the, the murals to Vanderbilt. And they designed the new lobby around these two murals. And they also... What building is it in? It's in the lobby of oh, the, the law, law school. school? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, I've been uh, there. I don't remember seeing it, new, though. My new uh, mural is hanging in the cafe of the newly renovated law school. I think I have that right here. Yeah. I think that's, that's what yes, I'm getting for. Oh, this yeah. is the new mural? Yes. That's Let me get it right here. One. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. This is it, right? That's the new mural. Okay, and I chose all of these. It's, See if we can get at this. It's called uh, Equal Justice Under Law, which is a motto of the Supreme Court, as you know. And these it's a are, motto, but it's not true. <laughs> and, and these are the challenges, uh, civil rights cases that were challenges to the Supreme Court. So the Court. guy in the middle is Thurgood Marshall. That's right. That's and, right. and that was a Brown versus the Board of Education. I think it's 1954 or something like that. That's right. And we have uh, Martin Luther King right, That's right. near him. And uh, down at the bottom in front of Thurgood Marshall is John Lewis. Can you point to Brian? I this is John Lewis, who was okay. uh, uh, an activist in, uh, in the civil rights movement in Nashville. Uh, Boy, you could have you you worked for Mad Magazine. You're, good, you're really good at this. And um, he, uh, he's actually a friend of ours, and he's now congressman from Atlanta. Okay, can you and, come uh, back on this mural so for a second. So a number of these... Uh, are related to Nashville. The Trail of Tears is here, and it went, of course, south of here. It was called the Indian Removal Act. Show me Roe v. Wade. You said this on This is Roe v. Wade. Now, and, and that's Sarah Weddington down in the corner, who was the uh, youngest woman to ever argue a Supreme Court case. And when she won, she didn't know it. They didn't have fax machines and, and instant uh, news reports. She got a call from a reporter wanting to know her reaction. 
right. to, to the Roe v. Wade case. And she said, I don't know what happened. And she, she said, uh, you won. So she found right. out from a reporter. And Wade was the, I think your mic's uh, falling down a little bit. I think your, uh, Wade, Wade was the district attorney? Yes. Okay. Yes. And Roe. Um, we, don't want to, we don't want this to rub against you. Okay. Okay, here we go. And Roe was uh, uh, sort of a pseudonym for right. the complainant. The first, right. And instead of Doe, it was Roe. Right. John Doe. And she later, woman, gonna, she later, she later. Because it was a woman, re, you think? Yes, and she she later recanted her position, but also only a couple of years ago though. But also, um, so they, we have the uh, women's suffrage movement, which uh, culminated in Nashville with the final 36. Now, how big is this mural that's hanging in Vanderbilt? It's uh, 10 feet, 12 10, feet, 12 feet, feet wide. wide. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And what's that thing behind it? That's the Supreme Court? That's the Supreme Court. Okay. Yeah. And this is the internment of the Japanese. Kiribayashi right. uh, is featured. Okay. And so uh, well, you got murals hanging. So you got this one and you got that other one hanging up in, at Vanderbilt? Both yeah, of them? Both of them. Yeah. Okay. So how did you get involved with Nashville, the movie? Well, I was asked to do uh, a painting for the L.A. Times with um, a reporter, Harry Hahn, who used to be at the Tennessean. And he was doing the story of the making of Nashville. And so I got to be on the set every day with Altman. And uh, I was... Robert Altman. Robert Altman. And I was drawing um, I, images. I think we're going to have a problem if, if, you, if your coat hits the microphone, but just thought I'd say I was, I was drawing images of each of the characters. There were 24 characters in his, in his uh, film. And I noticed uh, when I went to the costume sets, uh, that they were red, white, and blue. The costumes basically were red, white, and blue. So if you if you see, can you get the, that Nashville the, the colored design? Um, you see that um, everybody is wearing red, either red, white, and blue. Cindy, can you get that Nashville thing? Okay. So it was not just a, a show about Nashville and country music. It was really a homage to uh, stardom and to it was a national. Uh, well, it came out around 1970. It came, it came in 76, yeah, 75, yeah. and then 76 was, of course, the right. bicentennial. Um, so did you meet all these people that were yeah. in that show? Yeah, and uh, uh, I didn't like the way that movie ended. Well, it predicted two things. Yes, that sit like that, because then you want the microphone. It, predi it, it predicted two things: uh, the um, election of a populist southerner. Which which turned out to be Jimmy Carter. Right. And it predicted the assassination of a singer, uh, a well-known singer, a John, John Lennon. Lennon. Mm. So Altman that. was mm. always worried that he was blamed for that somehow. But um, I never put it together. I, saw, I saw him uh, 10 years later uh, when he was trying to do Nashville 2. Was there a Nashville 2? That was never a Nashville 2. Um, because there was not enough money, all the actors had become famous. Oh. So the, the, I, the believe success, they, I believe each yeah. one of them got $10,000 for their roles. Hmm. And uh, I didn't get quite that much, but I did pretty well on the poster because they used it in the movie and they used it on the soundtrack. You, cover. Still, get, you still get money for that? or that's a, that I was get a, a dollar every time it's shown. No, that's not true. No, I'm talking about uh, it's on the DVD or yes. that, actually that DVD was really hard to find. Now it's not anymore. No, there's be. a new uh, Blu-ray. Uh, right, you, right. So it only came out like a year ago. Yeah, or so. and it's so, really great. Right, because I had to watch. And you'll the, see, you'll see it, um, the poster in several of the. So now you're involved design. with the national TV show somehow. Yeah, I got uh, hired to do. Um, Let's get the storyboards else. for the uh, pilot. What, what does that mean, storyboard? Storyboard this is what it is, but what does it mean? A storyboard is a series of drawings uh, used in the production of a film that show the position and the, and the movement of the characters and the camera. And what do they need a storyboard for? Well, it helps guide uh, the director in, as he's going shot by shot, and uh, he can figure things out without spending a lot of money There's setting it up. There's the mayor right there. I don't like that guy. That's Eric Close. He's I a know. really fine fellow. Yeah, but I don't like this character that he's. Oh, well. 
<laughs> right? You know, he said. Well, there's uh, television. Oh you know, he, you got He's Randy James' husband. But that's he, right. But he fools. He fooled around with with Brad Paisley's wife, no. and then got got her killed, and 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 had oh. and watched as uh, as that uh, the father died and didn't do anything about it. That's true. He's no good. That's television <laughs> screenwriting. He's for no you. good. I like okay. Hayden Panettiere. She's my yes. favorite natural. She's beautiful. I've seen I've seen every episode of that. It's great. Yeah. And so several of my uh, the second episode showed my storyboards on screen when they were shooting Telescope, Hayden Panettiere's uh, first music video. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, right. So, and, and I, Are you still I involved three, with the Nashville show? Or to, you never know. It? You know, when they call, then I come back. Did you ever do character shows like, I, was, I said I mentioned before, like Mad Magazine? You ever do anything like I've that? Done, I've done character tours, yeah. Do you know who Mort Drucker is? I know who he is. Really? He, I grew up with his sister. Oh, uh, not really? his sister, his daughter. Sure. Yeah. We, we, great, the same place. great he, illustrator. Yeah. yeah. He really made Mad Magazine in fact, worth yeah. watching. In fact, yeah. EC Comics were my inspiration growing up. So I loved to watch. Uh, I loved Two Fisted Tales and Frontline Combat. And then I had all of the early EC Comics, including all the early Mad. Oh, the oh, early that, Mads. That, yeah, that, when oh. it was still comic book. Like 1 through 25 yeah. was a comic book, and the rest it was more that was Drucker, yeah. Mort Drucker was writing, was yeah. drawing for EC? Yes. And mm -hmm. so, uh, in terms of storyboard, I taught storyboard design for 10 years at Watkins College of Art and Film and Design. Wow, that's done a lot. So. We've got a heavyweight here. <laughs> well, what I was interested to find out is that he went to an art school that no longer exists, that that's was right. native to Nashville. What was that? It was called a Harris School of Advertising Art, and it was right across from Belmont College. Um, and they had an entire block. The campus was an entire block long. And Belmont finally bought the property, and they moved out to Battlewood, which is near Franklin. Um, but ironically, I had a one-man show at the Lou Gallery, and that was on the actual spot of my art school. When did you have, discover this talent that you had? Oh, did, when I was young. Uh, did you just know six. you could draw people? And yes, yes, I could really? draw. My cousins tell me that, that I would embarrass them. I would be drawing tanks. This was World War II, so I'd be drawing tanks and attack heli uh, aircraft and soldiers and so forth, and they would try to be drawing little stick figures. So have you always worked through Nashville, out of Nashville? Always out of Nashville, yes. So you must have done some country music stuff, right? I have. Oh, we have to have that right here. This yeah. is yeah. a setup, huh? Yeah, that's right? a great setup. This right. is uh, this is the Can first. Cindy, with Cindy still there? Yeah. Wayland and Willie is yeah, the Wayland first uh, country album to go platinum. Really? Yeah. I have that album. And uh, they is that the one with uh, "Mama Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up"? Yeah, with? sure is. You drew that? That's a drawing, isn't it? Yeah. Painting. Almost looks like a, yeah. almost looks like a photo. And my my painting. Uh, uh, Brown is seen at my studio. It's still there. I still have the painting. The original. Oh, the original. Yeah. The original. Yeah. Wow. There are not many album covers that are done that way anymore. Nope. That's a nice one. I've and I've done like Charlie. It. Dan I've done several Charlie Daniels. I've done Dolly Parton. I've done Which Dolly Parton did you do? I don't remember the um, drawing one. Um, Joshua. Joshua. I just yeah. heard that song just the other day. Yeah. And then I did her portrait too. She asked me to do a portrait. Really? Yeah. So I did her portrait. Was she look? I mean, was she right in the studio when you were doing it? Yeah. Or did you she do it up a over. photo? No. Well, I. She asked me to come over to her house, and I took photographs of her, and then she would come over to the art studio, and while I was doing the final touches, and she's just a charming, wonderful person. Um, just like we suspect. Come on, I don't get to meet anybody. The, uh, you're as a side thing go. Brian's on the Wanda Beatles. That's my biggest connection here. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my wife, Bonnie, modeled for her hands because they were a little bit uh, curled under. Like their, her fingers are fairly short, so I, I changed her hands just a little. And uh, there was a ring on one finger uh, that. Uh, we're talking about Dolly Parton stuff? Dolly Parton. Her hands yeah. are curled? It's, well, they, I know. Not anymore, I mean, not just, in the portrait. Just. Yeah. They were in the shot I took. Oh, okay. So I couldn't see them very well. Okay. And um, you like Bonnie Porter. Stuff. Porter had given her a ring that she that he wanted to have in the portrait because she was still Porter's associate at the time. Oh, that was a while ago. Oh. Then. Yeah. Okay. That was a while ago. Okay. And um, 
her husband didn't want the ring in the portrait. So I, that's some of the conflicts you get into when you're doing a portrait. Oh, could you make an <laughs> alternate <laughs> version? Yeah. Her husband is like Carl Dean, right? Carl Dean. But not the Carl not Dean the, of the not mayor. Not the mayor. Right. Not yeah, that Carl, Carl Dean. Carl Dean's a fine person. Which one? Both of them. Okay. It's politically correct. <laughs> yes, I know. I just Only one of them is married to Dolly oh, Parton. Oh, we got we had another thing to show here. Um, I got to reach oh, back yeah. and get it. Oh yeah. Can you get oh, that? This yeah. is a this is the latest project I've been working on. Um, yeah. What is this? Science this fiction. Is, I, I, here's another one. I worked on a. Um, what does it say? I can't read it. The Burn, Burn Riders. Riders. Yeah. What does this mean? So this, this is, is a, a nice little thing uh, you got here. We, the, this uh, is the cover of um, a book, an uh, e-book, and also um, we're presenting, e we're sending it to a Hollywood producer for a television series. I'm a Hollywood producer. I lose money. There you go. <laughs> I know how to lose money. And this is yeah. created and written by J.G. Nair, who's a uh, Vanderbilt physician, and illustrated and designed by me. And I, we've worked together for over five years on it. How many illustrations are there in the book? There are several hundred. Wow. So you read it. And the burn writer. Oh, this is a, um, this is a, uh, a graphic novel. This is a graphic novel. Oh, I, That's I'm available sorry now. Sorry to pay attention. Yes. Okay. And it's um, depicting a, a future world after the apocalypse where burn riders, these outcasts, band of people who are sent out into the burn which has been destroyed to um, de to find uh, to use de-evolution to find DNA to reconstitute animals that have been destroyed. So J. William Myers, that's you? That's me. What's the J stand for? John. That was John my William father's Myers. name too. So John I'm a, Myers. I'm a junior. Oh, okay. Well, so good luck with this. Well, thank you. Hope it becomes the next, uh, the what? next big hit, Spider-Man or something. Yeah. Yeah. One could do worse. Yeah. So do you, so some of the advertising you've done. What was some of that? Um, well, I've I've done a lot of things. Um, one thing I remember doing was um, the um, campaign. Uh, the uh, I think it was called. Um, Tennessee homecoming that Lamar Alexander had that I was asked to do by the advertising agency. And um, I said to the art director, but I'm a Democrat. And he said, so am I, so do the drawing. <laughs> and I, I did the drawing, which was actually not uh, political. It showed Lamar uh, going across Tennessee, um, doing all these good works in different communities. And down in the right-hand corner, uh, well, was a young African American boy with a paint roller, and he had been helping his community, and it turned out uh, to be Harold Ford Jr. So, <laughs> uh, and I actually got Harold to sign that recently, and I know that Lamar has that in his office in Washington. Oh, it was a painting, or it was a drawing. A so drawing? I do a lot of drawings. And too. you put Harold Ford Jr. in there on purpose? No. No, oh. I, he was just a little boy. Oh, okay. No, or we didn't know he was Harold Ford. Jr. Didn't he run okay. for something? Didn't he run for senator or something? Yeah, or he ran for senator but didn't and win. Did, didn't win. But, but he was a congressman. Did quite well. He was a congressman right. from Memphis. Yeah. Right. Lamar, that was the name of the guy who was on Nashville. Yes. Who got killed. Oh. Yeah. Who died of a heart attack. And Teddy just sat there, the mayor, just sat there oh. and let him die. In Not that he was a In great fact, person. his original name was Lamar Hampton. And... I asked uh, Callie, the writer, um, if um, did Lamar live on Hampton or a golf club? And she said, oh, no, I don't remember. So she changed the name. I, that was probably other reasons, too. But Right. Hmm. So what's she like, the writer of uh, Nashville? Oh, she's wonderful. Callie Curry won. You the, think she has a part for me in that show? She, ha she won. She, uh, she's also <laughs> directed a number of episodes, and her dialogue is so snappy and witty it's just outstanding and of course she won the academy award for Thelma and louise oh really she did that yeah as a writer as a writer oh i didn't know that yeah. <clears throat> wow I she don't worked like... in nashville for a while or did she did and then left and now she's back again i believe she's bought a house 
Well, and she's married to T-Bone Burnett. Okay, who was involved in the music, he does the the music. First, yeah. the you first know, season. That is the most unrealistic thing about that show, that the music is so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is good. It, and, and these are all real... Very unrealistic. These are all real national writers. Yeah. You know. Well, you know what? You know that guy who plays Deacon? Yeah. I saw him in the next to last episode of Married with Children. He proposes to Kelly. And I, when I watched it, I said, that's the guy from Nashville. And it was like 20 years ago. Yeah. Know? But I just saw the episode. Yeah. Just a little aside. Oh, he's very handsome in person. I don't, I don't judge guys like that. Do you well, that's like the person. Was that the well, that's the re uh, but I have to because I draw them. I drew oh. them. And uh, interestingly enough, when I was doing the pilot, he hadn't been hired yet. So I didn't know what Deacon was going to look at, like in the storyboards. So I just drew a guy with a you know, couple of days growth beard, handsome looking guy, looks just like him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you should have watched Married with Children. So I projected the, the character. You should have watched Married with Children. Well, we didn't know. It so was, what's next for you on, on the, besides the, uh, that Burn science Riders fiction thing? Yeah. We, I never know. And I've never known since I was started in 1966. I've never known what was going to be next. Did you start it's out? Very, it's very, uh, Worrying, I think. And when uh, did you start out working for yourself? You started working. No, for I, I, I worked. My first job was at Capital Engraving Company in Nashville, and my second job was at Marshall and Bruce Printing Company, and my third job was at the United Methodist Publishing House, where I started the illustration department. Do you ever? Uh, and then I went on uh, on my own. Then, do you ever do cartoons? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I don't know, and not cartoons. Um, but animation. Or, no, or the, card, the ones that are magazines, the little comic ones. Oh, a comic strip? Or no, not a, a comic strip, but oh, like, the like editorial you know, cartoons. Yeah, like just like one. one uh, what do they call that thing? Editorial cartoons. Editorial cartoons. I've done those, and in a way, this Nashville cover is is a cartoon. Uh, in a way, you know, it's got that same raw humor. The the heads are bigger than the bodies. Did you meet Keith Carradine? Yeah, doing that. Had lunch with him. Really? Yeah. He, and it, uh, I'll tell you another. He was Wild Bill Hookup in, in Deadwood, by the way. Yeah. I that watch too a, much TV, don't I? That was a, no, there's, n there's no such thing as watching too much TV. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I knew you'd like this guy. I'm yeah. easy. <laughs> I'm easy. Yeah, and oh, that won yeah. the Academy Award. Right. The best song. Right. So uh, that's another aspect. This album cover uh, had an Academy Award winning song in it. Wow. And did he write that? He wrote it. Yeah. yeah and I saw it. I was watching him write it. Really? Yeah. You watched him write it. Well, I mean, the, the they set, were all yeah. sitting around in the motel room, uh, yeah. passing certain things around. No, we don't do those things. No, we don't no. do those things. No. But some people in Nashville yeah. did. Well, you know, I mean a Coke, of course. I mean, beverage. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well. But he, you, you've worked on a lot of movies since then. Well, I worked on um, a Living Proof, which was done for... Living Proof, I saw that. That, that was uh, done for NBC. It was the life story of Hank Williams, Jr. So oh, I did okay. the storyboards for that. But any other movies that you worked on? Uh, I, did, uh, I did one that won the Emmy. It's a short film called um, uh, Running Backwards to Forward. And uh, what did you do when you worked on it? You said I did the storyboards. Yeah. So they hire you to do a story. I, I still don't understand the purpose of a storyboard. All right. Uh, R.J. Cutler was the Academy Award winning producer and director of Nashville, the first two episodes. And he's also the ongoing producer. And he was in uh, cinema verite or, you know, documentary films. So the storyboards helped him with the visual narrative. When so you're he, trying to tell somebody else what it's about, you mean? yeah, yeah. Well, oh, when, when he's kind, of, yeah, and, and how it's going to be shot to tell the oh, story. Oh, oh, I see. In fact, uh, we did a whole sequence of storyboards of Raina picking up her two girls at school, uh, and it was going to be out um, at Innsworth on Highway 100, and I did. I must have done 40 drawings of the picking the girls up at school, so we all decided. He said. You know, this is going to cost a lot of money because we've got to pay parents to be there. We've got to block off the streets. Right. We've got to do the mother's mm. patrol. We've got to get all these parents lined up in the cars. 
let's just shoot it coming down Highway 100 after they've been picked up from school. That's right. And, and so that's So the storyboard was so alerted them to the, the price. Right. Right, I see. Exactly. They should have a car, uh, a comic book. Did you ever do, start a comic book or something like that? I did comic books when I was uh, young, when I was 10 and 12. In fact, I learned how to draw in three dimensions with red and blue pencils and have one lens red, one b lens blue. And you made up glasses like that? Yeah, and so I um, could oh draw in three God. dimensions. So are you a DC guy or a Marvel guy? EC. EC, that's before. Yeah. No, that's not before. Before yeah, Marvel, uh -huh. but not before. But not a DC guy at all. You're not. Oh, a I love it. Yeah, sure, I love all those, but I like the. I'm a, I'm a Supergirl guy. Yeah. I have Action 252. Ooh. You know what that is? It's an early DC. That's the first it's appearance right of Supergirl. Okay. Was EC mostly horror stuff though? Uh, like a Tales well, from the Crypt. Well, it was a, it was a it was war too. Was it you know the front line Ron, early 50s stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. He fought for our senator to try to ban them, remember? I wasn't here that long. Oh, then. You were, so oh a New Tennessee Yorker. senator? Yeah, an, another Tennessee connection. Yeah. Whew. Oh, well, that's very interesting. He's been on movie sets with people that you would recognize right, cool. their names. Oh, I... I um, Same quick, we're running out Vanessa of time. Redgrave invited us to the shooting of Wagner in Witznau, uh, Switzerland. So we went and met Richard Burton and... and uh, Cinematographer who who did Apocalypse Now. Oh well, we got we're running out of time. Well, but anyway, sure that was interesting. They, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, uh, this is our guest has been Bill Myers, J. William Myers. That's yes. right. That's yes. his official name, right? Nashville yeah, and native. And if you want to see some other things, you can go to jwilliammyers.com. We're going to put it on the bottom of the screen. Okay. We had it on the bottom of the screen. This is Brian Cumming, and I'm Jesse Goldberg, and we'll be back next week with another edition of the show. Be here.